Hello people, this is Ben Mzahi again. Um, and today I'm going to talk about the Greek debt, external debt crisis. Uh, the topic was born to my attention when I research, actually quite in random, when I research um, new ideas um, for studying German. Um, I'm currently studying German at B1 level, which is intermediate level. Um, and I wanted to improve my German because I wanted to reach all the way to C2, which is almost mother uh, language level, Muttersprache, in Deutsch, um, auf Deutsch, in Schuldigen Sie. Um, Anyway, so I read the reviews for a book that I've already learned, uh, read, sorry, um, that's what happened when I speak before my first coffee. Um, so, the first book in a series called Dino Learn Deutsch, um, which if you learn German at a basic level, I really recommend this series. Um, but anyway, I noticed the reviewer also reviewed a short essay about the Greek debt, external debt crisis, and that picked up my interest because I was only at eighth grade when the crisis has occurred, um, and at the time I did not, well, I was not really interested in the details um, it, because it was just the beginning of my political awareness. Um, and uh, my the beginning of my interest in nationalism um, so it really picked up my interest so i went to wikipedia to check for more resources about the crisis uh, it's not that i trust wikipedia i think wikipedia is really not trustworthy uh, the english wikipedia i can tell you is actually better can the Hebrew Wikipedia in that regard, and German Wikipedia is even better. But in general, Wikipedia itself is not very trustworthy. Um, anyway, so... One of the references in Wikipedia was to a movie, a Greek film, a documentary film called Deptocracy, um, which was in Greek and French, um, parts of it are in French and English, but most of the movie is Greek and the narration is in Greek. But I managed to find a version with, a, with English subtitles. Uh, not that I have a problem with the French, but I don't know Greek, unfortunately. I want to buy the book of Mounts, um, Basics of Biblical Greek. Uh, there is a new edition coming out by Zondervan at February 5th. Uh, but even that, that would be Koine Greek, New Testament Greek, um, and not Demotical Greek, meaning Modern Greek. Um, so, anyway, bottom line, I don't understand Greek, so I was lucky to find a version with an English subtitles, uh, subtitles which I will gladly put in the description. Um, now, the movie, I warn you in advance, is coming from a very leftist point of view it's a uh, it was done by Marxists but uh, that's a big but um, the movie itself raised my awareness to the problem of external debt uh, in Greece now when I made my the Hebrew version of this video I sent it to a friend for a review and that friend um, told my attention to the fact that not many people understand what exactly is foreign debt. Um, so the country's debt can take two main forms. One of them is internal debt, uh, meaning what the country owes to its own citizens, to corporations within the country um, for services and so on. 
um, tax return or refunds and things like that so that's internal debt basically what the country owns to its own citizens and the corporations that are based in the country now external debt it's what the country owes to foreign nationals to other countries and to corporations outside the country and most importantly importantly in these days to globalist illuminati funded illuminati run um, organizations most of them with a very anti-christian and anti-nationalist agenda um, so the movie um, actually picked up the fact that the main problem with Greek foreign debt was not the foreign debt itself, which is problematic in itself, but that's not what immediately caused the collapse. What immediate, what the structural reason for the collapse are two things that are both related uh, to the crisis, are two things that are both related to globalist organizations run by the Illuminati. One of them is the introduction of the Euro by the European Union, um, an organization run by communists with an agenda to destroy Europe and annihilate European culture um, and especially Western Europe because they know that Germanic and Celtic people are actually descendants of the ten lost tribes of Israel. Um, I have done a video uh, at a basic level about this topic which I will put in the description but they know um, that, that the people of Celtic and Ge the Celtic and Germanic people are the Israelites. That's why they are trying to destroy them and destroy the rest of the European nations um, by imposing Marxist laws, by creating artificial crises such as in the pigs countries, uh, Portugal, Italy, Ireland, Greece, and Spain. And, of course, try to destroy Europe for my team by uncontrolled mass non-white immigration. Because God reserved Europe for the white race, uh, just as he reserved Africa, most of Africa for black people, uh, and Eastern Asia for Asians, and so on and so forth. Um, so, we... So the introduction of the Europe basically create a lo created a lot of stains of economically weaker nations uh, within Europe because they lost all control over their own currency. They cannot really do anything if the, Europe, if the Euro loses or gains value. Um, so um, um, where was I? Sorry, I was distracted by a message um, on WhatsApp. So, Europe, uh, so the European Union na nations that enter the Eurozone, um, and by the way, you don't have a choice whether to enter the Eurozone or not. According to European Union regulations, when you crossed a certain economic threshold you must switch to the euro um, with the only exceptions are the only exceptions that are explicitly allowed to retain international currencies even beyond this economic threshold are the united kingdom and denmark um, So, um, where was I? Sorry, another WhatsApp message. Um, the dumb talk about if Christmas is pagan or not. Um, maybe I should actually make a video in the future showing that Christmas is not a pagan holiday. It actually is most probably the birthday of Christ. And even if it's not, it doesn't matter. A, and celebrating Christmas is a celebration of the birth of Christ 
Um, and of course, the fact that Christ liberated us um, from Judaism by the fact that we don't celebrate Hanukkah, which of course, always also in December um, or early November at the earliest. So anyway, returning to the topic, um, so all ca the European nations countries that caused that economic threshold um, forced, were forced to enter the Eurozone, um, except for Sweden because they manipulate their own economy in order to not cause this threshold uh, because they don't want to switch from the Swedish corner to the Euro, which is smart for them. Um, but anyway, Greece was no exception. It had to enter the Euro, the Eurozone. Um, and it lost all control over their own economic future, of their own economic fate, of their own economy. And that really helps them to enter a crisis because they cannot manipulate their own currency to lessen the, to lessen the crisis, um, like they did when they still use the drachma. The Greek former national currency. Um, another globally uh, intrinsic, uh, another root cause for the collapse was the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, another organization run by the Illuminati globalists. And they actually loaned money to Greece like they did to many other nations around the globe. Um, I think also Israel has some debt to the International Monetary Fund. I need to check it. Um, but anyway, the conditions for the loan put such a strain on the Greek economy and the Greek people that it almost torn the Greek state from within with internal riots, which of course deepened the crisis. Um, Anyway, so these are the two roots causes according to the plutocracy. Of course, I added the Illuminati part, um, which I believe in. Um, in social sciences, it's called uh, not. It's not called a conspiracy theory. It's called depth structure. That's the fancy uh, scientific term for conspiracy theories. Um, so, conspiracy theories um, are called depth structures. Um, the scientific definition is a phenomena, a phenomenon that you cannot watch directly, but you can actually watch the effects of that phenomenon. So, for Marxist, for example, because this movie, the plutocracy, was from Marxist point of view. The IMF loans and the external debt of Greece and the effects of the euro on weaker nation are all effects of the bourgeois superstructure um, and that we cannot watch directly. I mean, there is no such a thing that we can watch called bourgeois superstructure, but we can watch its effects according to Marxism. So, if you want to know where I come from, just switch the bourgeois superstructure with the Illuminati and the New World Order. You cannot watch them directly, but you can watch the effects in many instances. Uh, and the deep Greek debt crisis is just one effect out of many, and in the next videos in the series, I hope there will be would only one more video in the series, but maybe there will be more. There is 
actually attain um, events that we can watch, namely other debt crisis around the world. Um, but anyway, if my theory is true, what is the goal of the Illuminati using their globalist organizations in order to actually facilitate debt crisis around the world, and especially in Greece? Now, my theory is, because I've noticed something interesting with the parallel debt crisis from the 80s, um, until today that all the countries that were affected, nearly all of them had nationalist governments that tried to strive for a relatively ethnic homogeneous, homogeneous ethnic nations um, so it is my theory that the debt crisis is a tool used by the globalists in order to force the ends of nationalist anti-globalist nations um, in order to force them to accept mass immigration and to commit mass suicide, national, mass national suicide and of course also to fight Christianity as you will see in Greek. Now the Greek church and Greek nationalism, the Greek Orthodox Church and Greek nationalism always went end in end, in end together. Um, Many Greek nationalists were faithful Orthodox Christians. Um, Orthodox Christianity uh, permeates the life of everyday life of all, almost all Greek uh, people. Not only Greek citizens, but also Greek people abroad in the diaspora. And also of some Greeks here in Israel. Um, so, anyway, in order to underline this, I will actually give you a short intro on Greek nationalism in order to see what I mean. So, Greek nationalism, of course, started, um, you can see hints of it already in the ancient Greek period which for me does not come as a surprise at all because nationalism actually started I mean nationalism that is close to our modern sense of nationalism um, actually started with the Israelites uh, now the division of the world to nations, to ethnic group, to races that should keep separate actually started at, Bab at the Tower of Babel incidents where God split the world um, to nations and to ethnic groups and to races. Um, but then God decided to start to jumpstart the idea of nationalism in order to preserve that order um, with the Israelites. Now, from historical sources, and I will put relevant link in the description out of a book by one of the Churches of God that they have a few pages and articles that deals with this topic. The ancient Greeks, many of them were actually Israelite people that chose to go to Greece in order to flee with Moses um, during the Exodus. So they went to Greece and of course they already were already nationalists and they helped to create Greek nationalism, that sense of unity um, of the Greek city-states that they are one nation even above all the wars that were, were they commonly fought against each other. Um, as we can see, for example, in certain several Pan-Hellenic Games, um, the most uh, famous, of course, are the Olympic Games, held every four years at Olympia. 
but there were also other pad LNA games as well, such as in Delphi. And of course, some games um, and competitions in Athens, which were open for all the Greek speaking people are from around Greece and the Greek colonies around the Mediterranean and the Black Seas. Anyway, uh, Greek nationalism was strengthened intentionally by the Roman Empire, which actually assimilated many aspects of Greek culture and the elites spoke, the Roman elites tended to speak Greek perfectly and Greek, the Greek culture was commonly seen as a superior culture um, to the native Roman culture by the Roman elites and that helped to really strengthen Greek nationalism until eventually the Constantine splitted um, it actually uh, splitted never mind the Roman Empire into two and the Eastern Roman Empire began strictly Greek speaking after the fall of the Western Roman Empire in 476. It became Greek in both culture, language, and, and self-identity. Now that Byzantine Empire survived for more than a thousand years until they were finally conquered by the criminal Ottomans which committed a massacre of the Greek population in Constantinople and oppressed the Greek and took many Greek children to serve as, as warrior slaves, Janissaries, uh, Janissaries, sorry, uh, Janicheris, uh, Janicherim um, in Turkish, in Hebraism in Turkish. Um, so, that was the end of the most of the greatest independent greek state the world has seen until then but the greeks were not content for long they were actually content for 300 years and then in 1769 uh, then in the 18th century the greek became discontent again with ottoman rules and began to talk about cultural autonomy on independence and in 1769 they created their first flag which to me is very similar to the flag of Finland except the cross is exactly in the middle of the flag instead of the in the left side of the flag like in the Nordic countries and that flag was used until the beginning of the Greek war of independence um, but back then, some Greeks already decided to think, uh, start to think about Greek independence for Greece from the criminal Ottomans. And they created their own flag. Of course, that wasn't mostly in Greece itself because it, Greece was under the control of the Ottoman police state. Um, it was mostly done in other fellow Orthodox nations, most notably in the Russian Empire, um, which was the only auto independent Orthodox nation at the time. Now, eventually, at 1814, um, Greek exiles um, in Odessa and other places in the Russian Empire, but mainly at Odessa in modern-day Ukraine, but then part of the Russian Empire, has decided to establish an organization called the Filiki Eteria. Okay, Eteria. Ashav, now their uh, motto was Eleftheria Itanatos, Eleuteria Itanatos, meaning freedom or death, uh, very similar to the American War of Independence slogan. And they had an house on what now known today as Hretzka Square, Hretzka Square or Greek Square in Odessa, in the Ukraine. Um, 
then that organization was founded by Emmanuel Xanatos, Xantos, and their aim was to create an independent Greek state. Um, now they were not, unlike modern nationalists, they were actually pro-European um, and pro-egalitarian, bringing pro-equality between the different European nations. Um, actually, that was the common ideology of many nationalist movements back in the 18th and the 19th century. They were all pro-European in the broadest sense of the term or sometimes excluding Russia, uh, but not in this case. And they saw them as equal to other European nations. That sense was destroyed by two events. One of them is World War II, thanks to the National Socialist Arbeitspartei, uh, sorry, National Socialist Deutsche Arbeitspartei, and which saw itself as superior, uh, German people as superior to Mediterranean and Slavic people. <clears throat> and the other was the European Union, which actually made the idea of European unity, unity disgusting in the eyes of many European nationalists. I personally think it's a shame, it's a shame, but we need to destroy the European Union before we can even talk about a united nationalist Europe. The European Union actually took us a lot backward in the even implementing the project of a united nationalist Europe. Um, anyway, but that organization existed um, and was vital in preparing for the Greek War of Independence which eventually erupted in 1821. Um, that war lasted until 1830. Um, it was very bloody. The Turks committed many atrocities against the native Greek populations. In some instances, they massacred entire towns, including women and children. But eventually the war ended in a Greek victory because um, the great powers at the time, the great Christian powers of the great Christian European powers of Britain, France and Russia, um, at least two of them, France and Britain, are Israelite nations. I will put the links um, to articles that talks about it in the description. Um, but the war ended with a British Franco-British Russian intervention against the Ottoman Empire and the Greek water independence at the begin only in Athens, Boyotia and the Peloponnese uh, while the rest of Greece was still subject to Ottoman control uh, this is a result couldn't last and eventually in Crete erupted a great revolt between 1866 and 1869, which was crushed by the Ottomans, but brave warriors, um, brave Cretan rebels, um, took to the mountains during that time and fought a guerrilla warfare against the, invade, the foreign Ottoman control. The Ottoman, of course, committed many atrocities, um, on the Cretans and try to Islamize um, Crete by force um, and destroy many Christian sites in Crete such as the Arcadia Monastery sorry the Arcadi Monastery okay near Etimnon in southern Greece Now, and that led to the creation of the coma of the coma ethnicophon, ethnicophoronon, or the nationalist party, or either the party of the nationally minded, 
um, later on. That was the first party I'm aware of that started to, that conceived the Megali idea, meaning the idea of Greater Greece, um, including all the parts of Greek today and Trakia and Ionia, um, the area of the modern day Turkish terrorist entity. Um, that traditionally was populated by Greeks since ancient times. That party was, by the way, disbanded by 1913. But before that, Greek nationalism managed to instigate two major fights against the, the Ottoman Empire. One of them is the Macedonian struggle between 1893 and 1908 um, in Ottoman Macedo Macedonia. That conflict did not come, did not result in anything because it ended during the Young Turk Revolution in 1908 in Constantinople. Uh, the Young Turks are, by the way, the guys that ordered the Armenian genocide. But there were during that 15, those 15 years in Macedonia, there were clashes between everyone and everyone else. I mean, Greeks. Macedonians, Serbians, the Ottoman army, even the Romanian, our Romanian minority in Macedonia, in northern Greece today. Uh, overall, it is estimated that slightly less than 700 fighters died and around approximately 1,250 civilians died during those 15 years because of that struggle. But that struggle did not come into any fruition. Um, but then, only four years later, in 1912, came the First Balkan War, which finally evicted the, Ottoman, the Ottomans from the Balkans, and from all of the Balkans, all the way to the modern-day Turkish, uh, Greek and Turkish-Bulgarian border. The war was fought by Greece, Montenegro, Serbia, and Bulgaria against the Ottoman Empire. They crushed the Ottoman army, and seven months after that, almost eight months after that, in 13 May 1913, uh, an armistice was signed, and the Ottomans were evicted from all the Balkans, Greece reached its modern day borders roughly um, beside the Dodecanese which were under Italian control. So the Greece won Thessaly, Epirus and Macedonia, Macedonia um, modern day Greek Macedonia um, during that war. Albania got its independence during that war. Um, Serbia reached its more, roughly reached, almost reached its modern borders. Um, Bulgaria actually took um, some area areas that today belongs to Greek, um, on the all the way to the coast of the Aegean Sea. But overall, the modern borders in the Balkans, um, at least of Greece, were actually established by hmm, by this time. Um, and of course, they were later changed dramatically after World War I, uh, when Yugoslavia was formed and Romania reached the heights of his, the height of his territorial expansion. So after the First Balkan War came World War II and during World War II um, after World uh, sorry came World War One sorry that's what happens when I don't drink my coffee in time 
that was found, as we know, between 1914 and 1918 and the final peace treaty. In the our case, the Treaty of Sèvres was signed in 1920. Um, of course, the Treaty of Versailles was finally signed in 1922. That was the official end of World War I, but the Treaty of Sèvres with the Ottoman Empire was signed already in 1920. It was much more harsh on Turkey than the later Treaty of Lausanne, signed after the Turkish War of Independence in 1923. And I really advocate, actually advocate a return to Sèvres in order to punish Turkey for its crimes against humanity ever since its existence, which I will not detail here because we don't have time for this. Maybe in another video in the future I will detail all the crimes that Turkey commit. Um, ever since 1922, 1920, and until today. And is about to commit against the courts right now because Trump foolishly um, evicted his troops from Syria right when Erdogan wanted to invade um, into more, illegally invade more Syrian territory. Anyway, so after World War II and the Treaty of Sèvres, Greek actually almost achieved the Megali idea in its entirety. It received the city of Smyrna. Um, it was part of the mandate um, it's part of the mandate um, international mandate of Constantinople, Greece was part of that. But, of course, um, Kemal Pasha, the guy we know today is Ataturk, um, disagreed with that treaty, um, and eventually, in 1922, he conquered Smyrna, burned the city to the ground, killed a lot of the Greek population, and then signed a treaty with Greece that of population transfer, many Greek Muslims um, were transferred to Turkey, then God, and may it, they should have stayed or transferred all of them. Unfortunately, there are still some Muslims in Greece. Uh, Greek Christians that live in Turkey, in Smyrna, and Constantinople, and other parts of modern day Turkey, uh, for centuries were evicted by force into Greece. They are mostly Saloniki. Um, and that was the start probably of modern day Greek nationalism um, ever since then Greek was a relatively national state and the Orthodox Greek Orthodox Church was very influential in the country um, until the debt crisis in the debt cri after the debt crisis two things happened first a uh, Greek chose an anti-Christian government that wants to strip the Greek Orthodox Church of all of its powers and authority. And second, after the start of the Syrian civil war, um, or I should say, I should say, after the sign, the start of the Western illegal invasion of Syria by, by proxy. Um, Greeks was forced to accept immigrants from the Middle East that are a threat to, to the native Greek culture and ethnic identity um, and ethnic purity. And in a later video, I have to finish now because I have a debated Christmas, uh, eaten Christmas debate I want to join in. Um, Where was I? In the next video, I will detail um, analogous events, uh, debt crisis in Latin America, Russia, and Eastern Asia. Until then, okay, until then, of Wiedersehen, tschüss, and I will say in Greek, I will say in Greek, good morning, Kalimera.